Well, we know since about 80 years that there is apparently more mass in the universe than we see in, in luminous objects like stars or galaxies. And uh, with increasing sensitivity of our instruments and improvements of our methods, you know, we found more and more evidence for that is the case, both on scales of galaxies, galaxy clusters, but even on the largest scales in the universe we can observe. Okay. Now, is that a question for astrophysics? Is that a burning question for astrophysics? I think one can argue about this. It is not the first time that there has been unseen matter that led to a detection afterwards, a discovery afterwards. One of the planets in our solar system has been found exactly in this way. Astrophysics also had other problems, so to speak, in the past. For example, we only discovered half as many neutrinos, these very light particles from the Sun, as predicted by our solar models. And the question was, is, are, are our solar models wrong? Or is something wrong with the neutrinos? Now that has led to the discovery of neutrino oscillations, a very fundamental property of particle physics. And so the existence of dark matter may be a problem for astrophysics, but I think it's more a physical problem or a very interesting physical finding. We know that our models of particle physics are not complete. We have a standard model. The recent discovery or probable discovery of the Higgs particles at the LHC has shown that the standard model you know, is beautifully working, but we know it's incomplete because the standard model does not predict neutrino oscillations. And so we need an extension of that standard model. And every extension of the standard model predicts new particles. And these new particles could be uh, candidates for the dark matter particle. And so I think that the discovery of dark matter from an astronomical point, astrophysical point of view, is actually an enormous challenge for particle physics, an enormous opportunity for particle physics, and maybe with the currently operating Large Hadron Collider at CERN, you know, such a particle will be found in the next couple of years, which would be a major triumph both for particle physics but also for, for astrophysics. Gravitational lensing has contributed a lot to what I said before, namely detecting, actually mapping dark matter in the universe. And in particular, there are certain classes of objects, so-called bullet clusters, which are you know, giant galaxy clusters running through each other. And in these systems, you can actually check whether um, our current understanding of dark matter, of cosmology, and in particular of gravitational theories, are compatible with the data, or whether you know, a modified gravity is, is compatible with the data. And these bullet clusters show that you know, modified gravity is unable to explain the lensing effect. So lensing has contributed significantly to our understanding of dark matter. Cosmological models predict that if you have two galaxy clusters sitting side by side, there should be a dark matter filament between them. One of these filaments has most likely been seen with weak gravitational lensing. Now, when it comes to the other dark component of the universe, the dark energy, the one that gives you the accelerated expansion of the current universe, a discovery that was uh, awarded with the Nobel Prize in Physics last year, there, gravitational lensing, in particular weak gravitational lensing, is seen as one of the four most promising ways of studying the properties of these dark energies. The other three is galaxy clusters, so-called baryonic acoustic oscillations, which looks at the large-scale distribution of galaxies in the universe, and supernova, the method that has been awarded with the Nobel Prize last year. Now, potentially, if we understand the method well enough, Weak gravitational lensing, so-called cosmic shear, is the most powerful of these methods. And recognizing that, the European Space Agency has last year approved a space mission, the so-called Euclid satellite, which is actually dedicated for doing a weak lensing map of half the sky, namely the extragalactic sky that is observable. And with that, we hope that after the satellite has been launched in 2020 and observed for you know, five years, will have a very specific and precise answer of the question of whether the dark energy is the cosmological constant, 
that Einstein has introduced or it's something much more interesting and much more dynamical which would be of great physical interest. But, you know, we have to wait for another 15 years for the results of Euclid to, to become available. Before that, we have quite a number of ground-based uh, surveys that will, you know, move into the direction but will not achieve the precision that Euclid will ultimately derive.